All I want is to be remembered by other people, by history. Solidus was designed by the Patriots as a replacement for Big Boss, meant to operate as their political puppet. He fought in wars he was deployed to fight in and acted as the United States' 43rd president. Solidus's lack of control and role as replacement for Big Boss made him want to separate from the Patriots and leave his own mark on history. All three of Big Boss's sons were trapped in Big Boss's shadow, though none more than Solidus. Unable to have kids himself and warped by the tragedies of war he witnessed as a young teen, he kidnapped Raiden and shaped him into a sort of pseudo-son. We recently just played through the true ending on MGS5 over on Twitch, and unbelievably, Solidus wasn't mentioned once in the end credit timeline. My boy just wants to be remembered, so today is all about Solidus. Today, we're taking a look at what kind of son Raiden shaped up to be, and if Solidus would be proud of him if he were alive to see him today. Just a heads up, this video will have spoilers for Metal Gear Solid 2 and Metal Gear Solid 4, but we won't be taking Metal Gear Rising into account because MGR being canon is debated and I, myself, don't really consider it canon. While you're here, if you enjoy game and character analysis that revolves primarily around Metal Gear Solid, please subscribe. What were Solidus's ideals? What was he fighting for and what did he value? First and foremost, Solidus wanted to secure his legacy. Solidus spent most of his life as a puppet to the Patriots. Big Boss had long since forsaken the Patriots, and so in response, they designed Solidus as a replacement figurehead for their organization. To guard against Solidus turning against them as Big Boss had done, they engineered him to age rapidly and without the ability to have kids. In his early teens, he was deployed to Liberia to participate in their civil war and then was later cast as the President of the United States. Even as President, Solidus was still a playing piece manipulated by the Patriots. He never had any real power, over himself or otherwise. As President Johnson says, Even if a pawn becomes a queen, it is still just a playing piece. Solidus' rebellion against the Patriots started way back in MGS1, where he planned to use the Metal Gear Rex test data and nuclear warhead it was armed with against the Patriots. His plans failed, however, and he was forced to resign from the presidency as he was no longer a suitable puppet. The Patriots planned to retire Solidus after his resignation, but he managed to escape before that could happen. MGS2 is where we really get to know Solidus. Solidus subscribed to the views of the Sons of Liberty and named his own band of people after them as well. He wanted to revitalize the Sons of Liberty. The Sons of Liberty were a political organization active during the American Revolution. They fought taxation by the British government and advocated for the rights of the colonists. They were loosely organized, with the Sons of Liberty moniker used to describe anyone who subscribed to their ideals and resisted the new crown taxes and laws. Jack, it's not power I want. What I wanted to take back from the Patriots are things like freedom, civil rights, opportunities, the founding principles of this country. Everything that's about to be wiped out by their digital censorship. The Sons of Liberty fought for freedom, civil rights, and better opportunities for the colonists. They fought things like the Stamp Act in 1765. Like the Sons of Liberty in 1765, Solidus resisted the Patriots' new regime and systems over information control. He saw these systems as a restriction of freedom and civil rights. Would Raiden be considered a Son of Liberty? Raiden opposed the Patriots. Raiden gets a first-hand taste of what a country ran by the Patriots could feel like. He's manipulated and fed false information throughout the events of MGS2 and sees how dangerous their desire to create context is. The Patriots organized the current president's assassination and put Raiden in direct confrontation with the man who killed his parents, Solidus, all to test their theory that they can manipulate circumstances and information using their AI systems. After Raiden's run-in with Solidus in MGS2, he dedicates himself to opposing the Patriots. He joins the Paradise Lost Army after the events of MGS2, an anti-Patriots group. Since Solid Snake and Otacon wouldn't have him, I guess. Side note, Snape tells Raiden he can't join him because he needs to find himself? But Raiden ends up joining an anti-Patriot group anyways. Why were we denied a Raiden philanthropy team-up? In MGS4, Raiden helps Snaven and company take down the Patriot AIs and their systems. The Patriots could no longer censor information or create the context they wanted. If this had happened before Solidus' downfall, he would have been remembered in history. So yes, Raiden could be considered a son of liberty. He fought to restore liberties to the American people and the freedom of access to information. He fought against an organization oppressing and controlling the American peoples. Solidus revered George Washington. He wanted to liberate America from the Patriots, much like George Washington had liberated America from the Crown. Interestingly, George Washington was a Federalist, which is someone who advocates for a system of government where several states unite under a central authority. George Washington disagreed with political parties and felt that they'd only serve to divide the country. Solidus carries a katana and a wakizashi called the Democrat and the Republican. He symbolically brings the two political parties together and uses them as tools to try and liberate America from the oppressive patriots. Solidus considers himself a liberator and a revolutionary. 
with George Washington being a Federalist and Solidus naming his Tools of Liberation and Justice, lol, Ryden, after the two main political parties to bring them together, we're again seeing a theme of connection and unity in Metal Gear Solid. I wonder what Solidus would have had to say about the boss's will. There isn't much in MGS2 or MGS4 that points to Raiden's political affiliations. Most of his story focuses on personal struggles as he fights to define who he is as a person and doesn't leave much room for him to wax political. Solidus would probably be disappointed by this, as he had clear political views himself and went as far as to personify his beliefs in his swords. Though both Raiden and Solidus viewed their swords symbolically. Solidus was obsessed with legacy. He tells Raiden, Jack, listen to me. We're all born with an expiration date. No one lasts forever. Life is nothing but a grace period for turning the best of our genetic material into the next generation. As a failed experiment, the Patriots are going to erase Solidus, both from this plane of existence and from history. Without any genetic or mimetic heirs, he'd be completely forgotten. All Solidus wanted was to be remembered, and he impresses upon Raiden that life is fleeting, whereas a legacy is lasting. Raiden has a family with Rose, a legacy, but he doesn't stick around with them to raise his son. He fails to pass on his legacy through his genetic successor, which Solidus would see as a failure. Solidus had clear political views. He admired George Washington and the Sons of Liberty of the American Revolution and their fight to liberate the colonies from the crown. He wanted to reform the Sons of Liberty as a group to oppose the Patriots, the new secret organization manipulating information and the American people in the direction they wanted. More than this, though, Solidus wanted to leave his mark on history. He wanted to leave a legacy, and regretted he couldn't do this by having kids as the Patriots had genetically modified him so that he was unable to conceive. Raiden was the closest thing to his son Solidus had, and he did what he could to pass his memes on to him. Raiden understood how dangerous the Patriots were, mainly through his own tragic experiences with them. Following his confrontation, he dedicated himself to wiping out the Patriots, eventually succeeding in helping Snavid wipe out the Patriot AIs. He didn't latch onto Solidus' political views, though. Focusing more on taking down the Patriots and protecting those with backgrounds similar to his, Solidus' speech about legacy flies right over Raiden's head, too, at least when it comes to his own biological son. He doesn't take the time to raise his son and pass his values onto the next generation, and instead abandons him to be raised alone by Rose. Solidus wouldn't have agreed with that move at all. Although Raiden eventually helps to take the Patriots and the Patriot AIs down, overall I think Solidus would have found him to be a disappointing son. He gets caught up in his past and doesn't put enough thought into the legacies leaving behind and doesn't put the work in to raise his own son. And that's what we have for today's video. Thank you so, so much for making it to the end of the video. Please like, subscribe, join us in Discord. We are always talking about MGS. More importantly than that though, please, please take care of yourselves and I will catch you all in the next one. Thank you.